Gigabyte aren't really a company you'd associate with peripherals, so let's look at their newest attempt at a gaming mouse called the XM300. This mouse is priced at $45, which is an extremely appealing price point, but did they cut corners to achieve this? Let's find out. Features wise, this mouse sports a Pixar 3988 sensor, which boasts up to 6400 dpi at increments of 50, 16.8 million color customizable lighting in a single area, a 1000Hz polling rate and a 1.8m black PVC cable which terminates into a gold plated USB connector. Surprisingly the cable does a good job of not tangling or sticking even in a hot environment. Strangely this mouse also comes with two pairs of replaceable Teflon feet with one set being white and the other being black which has me worried about the longevity of these feet. Dimensions wise the mouse is 130mm long, 60mm wide and 43mm high and weighing in at 99 grams, making this mouse both medium sized and weight. The shell does kick out to the left near the palm area of this mouse, making it only really comfortable for right handed users. Let's take a tour starting with the left hand side. At the very front is a 4 bar white LED system used to indicate which of the 4 custom DPI levels you have selected. Just behind that is a small soft touch rubber padded grip with an arrow like design, but I have found it to be too smooth so your thumb slides off, especially when there is any moisture present such as water or sweat. Above that is two perfectly placed side buttons that are a little stiff to press, especially the front one. On the right is more of that not so grippy rubber coating for your other side grip. On top is your left and right click buttons featuring Omron switches rated at 20 million clicks. There is constantly the same report popping up about the left mouse button, either sticking or having a double clicking issue after just a short period of use, which is not good at all. In the middle of those buttons is a rubber coated plastic scroller with some not very well defined steps but a decent actuation click. Behind that is two tiny buttons positioned slightly too far back with one labelled with a plus sign and the other with a minus that have the ability to increase or decrease your DPI. I'd prefer just a single button to cycle through your DPI settings for ease of use and reach distance. On the palm area is the single RGB zone which has some poor lighting and an accurate colour reproduction. One last thing about the top of the mouse is that I noticed the side edging here can catch your finger especially when the mouse button is being held down which I did find to be an issue occasionally. Finally, on the bottom we have three smooth gliding Teflon feet which are replaceable with the two extra sets provided. In the middle is the aforementioned Pixar 3988 sensor. Gripping this mouse was quite comfortable and natural for my hand with palm grip although my fingers are close to the front edge of the mouse. The body is made entirely from matte black plastic and build quality seems fairly decent. On to the testing portion of the review with first up CSGO aim training map. Before moving on to some TDM. I've been practicing like, you know, doing a spray down, then bang, switching straight to the pistol. Really handy because... Next up is Battlefield 1 for some close range engagements. Before heading to long range with the sniper. Acceleration is extremely present with this mouse, making quick drags across the screen a guessing game to where the crosshair will end up, and sometimes messing me up going for a precise shot, which is something I definitely can't cope with. Software is up next and they have called it their Extreme Gaming Engine, which in all honesty looks horrible and is extremely basic with it actually crashing on me a couple of times now. The first tab is the LED settings where you can set it to a single static colour with brightness adjustment, breathing of a single colour with both brightness and speed adjustment available, cycling, and off. Under the next tab is the button remapping where you can change the function of all seven buttons. The next one is the macro tab where you can create, record, import, or export macro settings. The pointer tab is up next where you can adjust any of the four DPI settings or adjust polling rate. Oddly enough I found 1600 DPI doesn't feel like 1600 DPI on all the other mice I've tested it on, but I can't be 100% sure. Finally, the last tab is for firmware updates and social media links. In conclusion, for me personally this isn't a mouse I could use as a daily driver, as I have been spoilt by better and more expensive mice, but for $45 you could easily argue this is a good entry level mouse for people who aren't phased by the issues I've raised. It is unfortunate that a few people have reported the left click issues, which turns a lot of people off, but if you do buy an XM300, hopefully you'll be one of the lucky ones who it works for flawlessly. The lighting effects and software aren't a big selling point for this mouse, so if you are looking for a mouse to colour match your setup, try the Razer Death Out of Chroma for 15 bucks more. If you enjoyed this video leave a like, and if you really enjoyed it please consider subscribing for more reviews and other content in the future. If you have a suggestion, question or criticism leave a comment, and thank you very much for watching.